Thank you for joining us in the Lakeshore Ballroom. Um, we're going to have Taylor Bell uh, present on Teaching the Teacher, Leveraging Jamf and Apple Resources for Professional de Development with iPad, which is a fully descriptive title. So let's uh, give it up for, for Taylor. Hey guys, how's it going? Are you enjoying JNOC 2019? Yes, okay, so not as enthusiastically as I am, but I think that I can get you there. So, let's get the clicker so we can get to going. All right. Like I said, I'm Taylor Bell. I am the Senior Instructional Technologist at Maryville University. That is a bunch of words that we strung together to describe nothing. Um, because what I actually do is I focus on our one-to-one. -one. So we actually have uh, the largest one-to-one -one in private higher education, which we'll get to here in a bit. Um, and I also help to focus on our learning management system. We use Canvas, so I do a lot of support for that. We have about 12,000 users, including students, faculty, and staff. They are all my responsibility. Um, and about 4,500 iPads institutionally. I also get to do fun and innovative things like working on integrating AR and VR and AI into the classroom and into some of our systems. So today we will chat about digital world. We'll talk about how we work to create digital leaders and why that's important. Uh, we'll also chat about pedagogy and practice because I think a lot of the time when faculty see uh, technology coming into the classroom, they get nervous. Like, how is someone who has never taught a day in their life going to teach me how to teach? Well, that's not actually what we're trying to do. We're not trying to take over how you run your classroom. We're trying to enhance the control and the focus that you can use to engage students in your classroom. And finally, we'll talk about the why, the outcomes and the student impacts and why you care. So Digital World came out of Maryville's strategic plan. It is robust, and it includes a lot of pieces. The active learning ecosystem is one, uh, focusing on diversity and inclusion and being able to reach the market. And so uh, based on that, we wanted to get buy-in from all of our stakeholders before we decided how to integrate technology into our campus. Um, and so we were able to get people to buy into the strategic vision, and Digital World was able to help us actually make that vision come to life with the use of the iPad and Jam. Um, so it's a collaborative effort between our students, staff, and faculty that is supposed to encourage the, uh, diverse learning. <clears throat> we also focus on, I have many notes, so let's scroll. <laughs> we also focusing on promoting digital literacy and uh, using the iPad in a very customizable way to engage active learning in our environment. So let's chat about what happens and, like, and why. So we want to promote pedagogy, so you can read, I will not read this quote to you, but we are, a, or we are an Apple Distinguished School. We have gotten that designation twice, which is apparently unheard of, so yay for all the hard work. Um, but we truly believe that when you can engage your faculty and pay salary and expect, uh, allocate them the resources to help them meet the expectations that you have for your learners, that's when we see success. So we actually really invest in professional development for our faculty and staff. We actually, in 2015, took a look back at our professional development model for faculty and said, maybe this isn't the best way to reach them. Maybe we aren't um, engaging them enough. So we took two weeks out of the school year that we added to their contracts. We decided to pay them for that. So we actually upped the budget for our faculty by about $400,000 so that we could pay them to come to professional development for two weeks out of the year. Um, and it, it was, it's organized by our Center for Teaching and Learning, the Finch Center, and they work very hard to get all of that programming put together in conjunction with our office. So my mom used to say when I was a kid, you can get into anything. All it takes is air and opportunity. Um, and so that's kind of what we give to our faculty. We have these four, these are our four biggest professional developments where we focus on engaging them. Uh, so we'll talk about Digital World pretty in depth. So I put that up there first because you know that's really the meat of the situation. But Real Week, we have every August, it happens in the fall. Last year, um, we, had, we had over 130 sessions. This actually all takes place on our campus, and it is, all the sessions are presented by our colleagues. So these are people that are professionals in their field, and sometimes in fields we don't even know about, that can come and kind of talk to us about how we're being engaging in the classroom, how we're using the resources that we have. Um, we focus on things like teaching and diversity, engaging our students. There was one called apps, 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 using the iPad in class. 
Um, so we really do try to engage our faculty and give them the responsibility of giving back to the community as well to help them learn. Um, we also do Perspectives Week. So that's a similar week in the spring where we invite faculty to come. It's collaborative, it's cross-disciplinary, and it's a workshop model. Oh, holes are dangerous. Um, and we have them keep track daily of all the goals that they're setting and all of their accomplishments. And in the classroom, that kind of turns into objectives and outcomes. And so they're really able to leverage not just the content, but that learning style as well to take it and add it to their pedagogy. So throughout these weeks, the instructors work together to become inspired um, and to kind of learn new things about learning in the classroom. So our... Yes, so 95% of our faculty have actually in, uh, completed Digital World PD and Canvas Institute, and these two are voluntary. So these are not required. This is not included in the two weeks of professional development that is added to the contract, like Real and Perspectives, but we do invite them back, and we've had 95% of our full-time faculty engage in those, as well as an undetermined percentage of our adjunct faculty. We are still collecting data on that, but we have added about 400 adjuncts to the um, group of instructors that have iPads as well. So it's not just our full-time faculty that are taking this technology into the classroom. We really want it to be global across our campus. So let's talk about the iPad onboarding, also referred to as Digital World PD on campus. There's eight meetings. We do it every semester. We go over best practices. We explore things um, like different apps. We also explore teaching philosophies and how we can tailor our philosophies kind of to engage technology. Um, we have, it's about seven and a half hours of training once we're finished, and we want to really instill our faculty with the comfort and the confidence that they need to go into the classroom. Because something that we don't do um, kind of explicitly is send our students through a training with the iPad. When our students get onboarded, we have something called START, where they come, they register, they get acclimated for their transition. We focus on telling them the things that they need to know. So we have a very quick process. We deploy about 200 iPads in 45 minutes at each of those events. And then we sit them all down in different sessions and we go over the basic things they need to know about their iPad. What we come to find is that they know a lot more about the devices than we give them credit for. Um, and so since then, we've really focused on engaging our faculty to give them the tools to let the students know how to use the device. We also incorporate a group of students on campus called Apple Corps. Um, so there are pros on campus and students can go to them. They are housed in different facilities um, throughout the day where students can go and kind of get training, one-on-one -on -one help and support. So we don't just leave the students out to dry, but we do make sure that the faculty are really equipped to answer any of those questions, to guide them, and to direct them as they're using these applications. Um, and we're also going to chat about something new that we introduced this year called App Smackdown. Has anyone ever done an App Smackdown in their organization? Yeah, okay, we got one in the back. So it's actually the funniest thing. Um, and, and again, we'll get into it later. But in addition to that, we focus on apps like GarageBand, Keynote, Photos, and of course, Apple Classroom. <clears throat> so one of the first steps that we took to acclimate our faculty was to go ahead and really focus on leveraging self-service not just as a place where students could go if they didn't know the name of an app and couldn't Google it in the App Store, or if they were trying to get an ebook or an, an iBook that was pushed to them. We really wanted to say, well, this is a space where we can have any app that we think will work for our, for our organization. So we started out with 15 apps. We have since moved to 150 apps that are available in our self-service store that are, have all been vetted by a group of faculty. It's a combination of faculty, staff, and students to decide what we need on campus. So we, of those 150 apps, 55 of those are paid apps, uh, some of which are course specific. So that if you have physics 402, then you know you're going to get the video physics app on the first day that you walk into the classroom. Um, and students, even though we tell them this, right, in their small onboarding, they're still amazed when they walk in and they're like, oh, I'm going to learn with this today. Yes, yes, you are. Um, so it really allows us to personalize the experience that each student has um, and allows them to kind of engage in a cutting edge way that they wouldn't have engaged with the iPad before. It also helps them if they're feeling kind of out of ideas. Well, I need to do a character outline, but I'm really not sure what to use to um, 
visualize my analysis? Well, they can go into the Maryville Cloud and they'll have many options, one of which is inspiration maps. So they are able to say, oh, maps, mind maps, this seems like a good fit. And they're able to access that content and that, those tools for free. Um, and so we really get our faculty introduced and comfortable with using and referring to the Maryville Cloud so that um, they can help students learn. And this is one place where JAMP has really allowed us to shine working with our faculty and staff, allowing us to use configuration profiles and then brand self-service as well. So now the fun, the fun part, so App Smackdown. So this is the newest part of digital world professional development. Um, it embodies gamification, competition, experiential learning, which are all things, right, that we want in the classroom. We want them promoting all of those things for their students, so why not start by teaching them in that way? Um, and so this also allows them to do their own app discovery. So there are about 10 apps that we focus on and kind of do very deep dives into, and several of them are tools that allow for quizzing, both formal and informal. So when we first introduced this to them, they were a little apprehensive. They were like, we're gonna fight with apps? I was like, no, 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 we're not gonna, we're not gonna wrestle, guys. I was like, let's say, for instance, Socrative. Has anyone used the Socrative suite, Socrative student and teacher? Absolutely. Um, and then Canvas quizzing. And then something like Kahoot, right? They're all ways to engage the students to assess knowledge on a particular subject or content. And I had them come together, and at first I just said, bring two things that you think that that app does the best. What are two reasons that that's the app that you choose to use in your classroom? And before they knew it, they were in a very robust and excited conversation, which I slowly guided them into the middle into our gauntlet. And I was like, guys, this is an app smackdown. You're doing it, and you didn't even need that, many, that much guidance. You didn't need rules. You just needed to know what you were talking about and what kind of information you needed to present. These are the kind of things we want our students to feel comfortable enough talking about. What do the apps do? How can you use them? What are similar apps? What makes them better or more useful in specific situations than in others? By allowing them to do their own application discovery, again, we're building that confidence so that when they come in to request apps, they aren't like, well, I think that maybe we could probably use this app for X, Y, or Z. They're like, no, I need the newest version of video physics because I know that when I'm measuring trajectory in this way, we can meet these five objectives and here will be the outcome because they've been given the tools and the resources to know how to use that kind of language and understand how the apps work in that way. Um, so it just encourages them, again, to, to use new apps in the classroom, not to be scared of them, and it also helps them to drive focus in the classroom by being able to engage students with new tools. So practice and pedagogy, uh, again, I think a lot of instructors are apprehensive at the idea of someone who is maybe in instructional technology or just in technology um, that hasn't had that teaching experience to come in and say, here are some things that you should do in your classroom or here are some considerations for using technology. And so we make it very clear that the practice is what we're here for. The pedagogy is what we're trying to help you tailor to fit to use the technology. Um, and so. As they, as they finish, they're actually encouraged to go and do their Apple teacher certification. So we have uh, 96 faculty at Maryville that have completed their Apple teacher designation and have kind of gone in and started using those apps uh, more robustly. I have one faculty who came to me the other day and she's like, have you seen Magic Move? And I, I was like, yes, yes I have. <laughs> and she's like, well, I used it, and it was, it was amazing. So now they've gone in, and she's used a combination of Keynote and Clips uh, to create different, uh, and this is physics again, because this is a very hard subject to learn, uh, that uh, explain different processes to students in a very engaging way so that they can now have that video on their iPad. They can keep it. They can view it in Canvas. They can also make notes on it and about it. Um, and so giving them, again, these resources and giving teachers the confidence to go through something like Apple Teacher is empowering. Most of them, when we mention Apple Teacher before they've gone through the professional development, are very reserved and they maybe are not 
willing to try. And after they go through the professional development, well, I mean, I think it kind of speaks for itself. We're almost to 100 Apple teachers, and that's completely voluntary. It's not something that we require. It's not something that we check on. Um, it's something that we have been trying to create badges for, but honestly, haven't had the free time. So they're not even getting rewarded. Um, they're just doing this of their own volition to become more um, educated educators. Um, and also, we encourage people to do things like Apple Distinguished Educator. Uh, we have five Apple uh, Distinguished Educators at Maryville and growing. We have people apply every single year. And we also, because of our relationship with Apple, are able to do things like Apple Everyone Can Create, where we can bring reps from Apple in that can help us learn more about how to leverage the iPad and maybe use tools and uh, situations that we wouldn't have thought to use them in before. And you can see that little graph there about how we've grown using Apple Teacher. Um, and it's as recent as last summer, and we've grown a little bit more since then. So this is just a quote from uh, one of my colleagues. We are actually co-teachers in one of our classes about social media and cultural awareness. And he went on to actually say that technology is infused so much into everything that we do. He is specifically talking about the Center for Teaching and Learning in this case, that we don't actually refer to it as technology. There's never a situation where we invite instructors to something and we say, remember to bring your technology. Don't forget your iPad. It's pretty much expected that any time we're gathering together to learn new things, to create new things, to collaborate on new things, um, that they're going to have a piece of technology with them. And I would say most often, they're going to have their iPad. Um, another faculty that I was working with in professional development this, uh, this year, actually, responded to a question. I always ask, why do, why do we do such rigorous professional development? Why is that important? Why do we make you keep coming to hang out with, most of the time, me, honestly, to talk about using technology in the classroom and to talk about upgrading our pedagogical standards? Um, and she said, you know, it's really important that we align our brains with the way that our students are thinking. And I think a lot of the time, we don't think of it that way, right? We think that we're here to teach them. So as long as we are delivering the content in a way that's palatable and they seem to respond based on assessment, then we're doing our jobs. But that's not always true. Learning can always be deeper. Learning can always be more engaging. And that's the reason that we need to do this realignment and kind of assess where we are when we're thinking about teaching and learning and the integration of technology. Um, she said, just creating engaging content and using fancy tools, that doesn't mean that the learning is going to be positively enhanced or that students will be any more engaged. It's really about understanding those tools and aligning them to meet the needs of the students. So, outcomes. Why would we keep working on this? Well, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Uh, data tells the story, right? And Maryville is big on telling the story. So we are able to collect a lot of data from our faculty, staff, and students about how they are interacting with the iPad and how it's impacting learning. So 98% of our faculty responded in a, in a survey from last year saying that they use the iPad primarily for teaching and course preparation um, and then other university-related work. So that's 98% of our full-time faculty. And we had the same number of faculty say that they were moderately confident or higher when using the iPad in the classroom. So if we compare that 98% of people that are comfortable with the 95, 96-ish percent of full-time faculty that have taken the iPad professional development, well, that's a pretty good number. Um, we're not, we are overshooting. Maybe some people already felt comfortable. Um, people that even didn't participate or maybe were inducted into the program before we had uh, started the professional development. 94% uh, agree that technology, the use of technology in the classroom, is instrumental to student success at our university. And so that's kind of a big ask when we're saying, can we not only enter your classroom and add something new, um, but can we kind of shake up the whole way that things are working? And they agreed that it was very helpful in their success. So for student impact, we did a couple of studies. Um, one was an intro to biology. So we had one section that did a traditional lecture for the uh, first eight weeks, and then we had another session that, in or that integrated the iPad, and it had an interactive ebook for learning, and then it had um, adaptive activities in class using the iPad. 
after eight weeks, we had a 9% increase in retention of information um, it, in the class that used the iPad versus the class that was purely lecture. So we were able to compare that again across the next semester, and we saw the same trend. So we were able to actually replicate those results, and our instructors were pleasantly surprised and have started integrating the iPad in that manner, both for the in-class activities and at-home readings in that particular course. We did another one for students in physics, surprise, surprise, um, and it's students that enrolled in the active learning session active learning sections, the instructor used a wireless lab equipment um, and it fed data to the iPads and the apps on the iPad that were related to that course. Um, they had a higher rate of course completion and higher grades on the final exam than instructors that did not implement that technology. And so now having that across, we've seen higher retention, less dropout. Physics is one of those classes that we see a lot of withdrawal from. We've definitely seen, seen a decrease in that since we have implemented that type of teaching and learning in those particular courses. This has since prompted Maryville to engage and adopt a digital first philosophy, where if any materials are available as digital materials, that is automatically the material that the student is given, unless they request a non-digital material for any reason, accessibility, or, or maybe you just like paper books. Um, but it helps with our sustainability goals and also helps letting the students know that all of their materials are in one place. So when you come to class, if you have your iPad, you're ready. This takes a lot of the burden off of them of which notebook, which book, what are we going to do today? What if I'm in a class that has four books for the materials? Um, and so this has actually really helped engage students, again, a lot more. So the impact of the iPad on our campus environment, um, D Digital World does focus heavily on teaching and learning. But our president strongly believes that most of the learning that students do actually happens outside the classroom. So the idea of that classroom of one has really been realized with the iPad at Maryville. Um, so we have permeated all the facets of the institution. We're using iPads in admission. We're using it in institutional advancement. We actually use uh, Apple push notifications in conjunction with self-service to uh, solicit our senior students for all the things that they need to do. Pick up your cap and gown. Don't forget to apply for graduation. Have you bought your brick for the walkway? Um, and we actually noticed a 103% increase in the amount of students that gave to the class gift in the first year that we implemented that. So just being able to expand digital world in such a way has been very powerful. Uh, we actually had 46%, a 46% increase in the incoming class enrollment for freshmen at Maryville after introducing Digital World, and 19% of those students indicated that the Digital World was a reason for them to matriculate. So I think a lot of people think that, oh, it's an iPad, it's a lure. But when we went deeper and we talked to those students, we said, well, why, did the, why was the iPad something that made you want to come to Maryville? They actually went further and clarified. A lot of them did and said it wasn't the iPad. It was digital world. It was the idea that I can now be engrossed in this learning experience no matter where I am. And it gives me a tool to use. So this was another facet of our strategic plan, diversity and inclusion, making sure that each and every student, no matter their background, has the same ability to learn and the same resources and tools available to them. So what now? What do you do at your organization to help teach your teachers, help them engage in active learning with the iPad and technology? So we opt to do organized paid professional development because that is what our faculty respond best to. Um, and, but you don't have to do that. You can start by just gathering a group of people that have common ideas or goals and want to learn more about using technology in the classroom and making a more active learning environment. Um, Something you could try is like an unconference. Has anyone done an unconference in their orgs? So it's super informal, kind of sit in a room like this, and you give anyone who wants to speak, and if you're me, you pick people that maybe don't want to speak, um, five minutes to pitch an idea or a pain point that they're having. And then any ideas that get high response rates, they can involve into exploratory groups or working groups and even into sessions and workshops. So. Professional development for digital world didn't start because I said, oh, we should teach them how to do this better. It started because a faculty said, I have a question about this app. 
and I'd like to learn more about it. And another faculty was like, hey, that's a good, that's a good idea. What can we do about that? Then they came to me and said, hey, there's a group of us that want to learn about using Socrative. And that's kind of where that idea was born out of. So it's not up to just one person or one department or one faculty member. Get people in groups. Have them just start sharing their ideas. A lot of good things can come from that. Doing tech field trips in open houses. So we have some cool technology at Maryville. We're very fortunate to have a great support from leadership. So we have a lot of AR and VR. They can come to our area and play with Oculus Rift or Oculus Go or now Oculus Quest. Um, they can engage with some of the AI that we're starting to create. They can talk to um, a Sumerian or they can talk to Sam who is a soul machine digital human. Um, they can also visit things like makerspaces or if you have a fab lab. Even if these aren't at your organization, if they are in town and you can get to them, it's nice to kind of just go and see what other people are doing to generate ideas. This kind of sparks a lot of um, innovation in a lot of faculty. You should also encourage virtual learning. So we do leverage our LMS, uh, Canvas, as well as social media. We uh, tweet, Maryville LDT has their own Twitter. And we try to tweet facts and tips and um, engage our users in that way. We have our full digital world professional development and a lot of our perspective professional development inside of Canvas so that our instructors are actually getting the same experience that students do as they participate in those Canvas courses as students. Um, and then. Do something fun, like implement App Smackdown. Make them a little uncomfortable because that's where growth really happens. Um, I also love the idea of having a collaborative scavenger hunt. So we do an uh, augmented reality scavenger hunt at Maryville and we invite uh, our faculty into our learning lab and we kind of, I've expanded it all over the building actually, where they actually use uh, HP Invent is what I think it's called now. It used to be called Erasma. And they go and they hold up the iPad and it gives them a clue and they have to go collect all of their clues. They use Notability to keep track of all the clues that they found. And at the end, they get a badge if they finish the scavenger hunt. This then inspires them to go and create scavenger hunts for their own classrooms. And it may not be augmented reality, but getting students engaged using the iPad, learning more about the resources on campus and learning more about the content in a way that maybe they don't realize they're learning about that content is always very exciting. Um, <clears throat> and just find new ways to promote experiential learning. Um, if there's apps that you would legitimately love to see go to head to head, start Make a gauntlet, make a physical gauntlet and tell people to bring their apps in. Invite them to do fun things. And I think that's really the best way to kind of engage your faculty. So this is a quote by our, our president. And the entire purpose of digital world is just that. That's the purpose of any professional development, right? We really want to integrate technology and we want to provision tools appropriately we want to allow co collaborative engagement for content creation, teaching and learning, and just the connection with our students. We truly believe that at Maryville, and that is why we have been successful. I don't know what that's about. That's supposed to say, y'all got questions? No questions. This never happens. OK, guys. That's it. Thanks so much for your time.